We're good to go. You're the one that's gonna jinx yourself. And then I'm gonna have to kick your ass. Listen. For dropping your own mics. Bucko. <laughs> you're just getting your ass kicked. <laughs> you wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't. Want, I didn't want to do this. Okay. It turns out it's like my whole kink. Like I just <laughs> like to get my ass beat. <laughs> Oops! I did it again. Oh, I've I've upset you. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna have to punish me. How are your chakras, by the way? <sighs> I think they're cool. Actually, you know what? Uh, What's the uh, the chakra on the lower back? The middle chakras? You're trying to... Mm. Middle back? There's seven chakras, right? I'm talking about my punji. It's super tight. And it's your punji. It, uh, it brings me to my knees sometimes. Do you need me to loosen up your punji? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm well, now a chakra master, and I can align all of your chakras. Why do you have something new every week? Why is it like, this week I'm super into <laughs> ASMR. This week I like ghosts. And now you're into chakras? Well, the funny thing is, I got into chakras because of ASMR. I can't believe you predicted that. It's probably because your chakras are aligned. It's because you talk about ASMR every podcast. <laughs> You talk about ASMR the way I talk about NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> my new my new favorite ASMRs to watch are people aligning my chakras. And now I feel like my chakras are good. And before they weren't. They can do it through audio? Yeah. That's kind of interesting. They grab it that's like they're trying to grab me through the screen and they take out the negative energy and then they they snip it and then they throw it away. But then there's some more. They get some more from me. Do they snip it with scissors yes. close to the mic? Yeah, so you hear it. They Sk- literally snip it. Sk- I Listen, Sk- buddy. You, you say, oh, I, sometimes this podcast Sk- embarrasses me because I don't want people to hear me talk about masturbation. How does this not embarrass you? you you bringing this up on your own free will. You have so much negative energy. This is going to take all day. <laughs> Keep Quit it. snipping it away. I worked hard for that shit. Give it back. You don't get to just snip it. He's that got, was non-consensual snipping. Unlimited resources of negative energy. <laughs> yeah. That energy could be used for something positive, though. <laughs> but it doesn't. It comes out in insults. <laughs> did we ever figure out a name for the bird? Did the, did the audience? It's or so did weird we you ever... brought that up because I was thinking about that today, too. The audience did throw out some names, all of which sucked because, <sighs> I mean, look who we're dealing with. We should have thrown out a contest or something. We need a giveaway. I keep talking about Ooh, that. Ooh, Okay. For those who are listening still, you made it past the 30-second mark, which is where 80% drop off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're uh, a loyal viewer. I'll mail out Salty Soup stickers. Hey. We haven't even announced to those the officially. To the best name for the bird. This is the, pr- the pre-sale. The pre... What do you call that? That is true. We do the have... Hypey. We have a merch line. Um, we currently have pieces of that merch. When are we going to let you guys know about it? I don't know. No. Maybe never. They got to earn it for sure. Yeah, First, we, the bird has to get named. We thought we had to personally test out the products and make sure they were top of the line. Yeah, All that's right. the we, biggest thing. We didn't want to give out junk to our people and then, <laughs> and then our <laughs> YouTube channel crashes. So yeah. Everybody says we're, gra- we're selling them crap that's All from Alibaba. All 30 of you that listen to the podcast just leave. <laughs> you buy a shirt, it immediately yeah. deteriorates. Like, what the heck? They gave me this shirt. It's got holes in it and shit. I don't know. They step onto the rain, it just disintegrates. <laughs> that would be really really funny though if we had like prank shirts. <laughs> prank merch? <laughs> prank merch would be excellent. That would be good. It's covered in asbestos or like <gasps> oh, anthrax man. even. It's gonna give you a rash, like guaranteed. <laughs> or kill you. <laughs> <laughs>
there that's you, the joke. There you, Some, go, there you go wanting to kill people again. We need to bring it back. <laughs> the Dexter, joke is most right, of them put are your tools away. <laughs> most of them are fiberglass shirts, <laughs> but some of them uh, contain anthrax. <laughs> Jesus, I just I just want them to smell bad for a while. Like why is why do I smell bad? <laughs> oh. I just got this shirt. You don't want something that like eats away at their skin, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> burrowing towards their heart. <laughs> no. I just I want them to be out in public, and then the shirt disintegrates, and then they just have just nipples. <laughs> just the nipples disintegrate. <laughs> Uh, okay, now we're can we do closer. nipples merch? Now we can. Now. <laughs> Dude, I mean, we'd have to in, probably personally cut the holes out, but I think it'd be worth it. It would be worth it, and the thing is, is we would need um, people to give us their size because, like, I'm oh. just picturing us in the next podcast just wearing <laughs> these nipple nipples and cutting holes in a bunch <laughs> of others. All my shirts, no. <laughs> You have to show your nipples, I guess. <laughs> I just found out recently, did you know that in Colorado or in Denver, uh, women are allowed to show their breasts and it's not illegal? I did not know that. More people should know I that, though. I feel you know like what I mean? we need to spread the word. We should get a the word out there, yeah. More. I think a lot of people don't realize this. We can make a video out of that. Like maybe we're like holding billboards up, like. Free the tatas, and like everybody's like, "What's this about?" Like, they legalized them, and nobody knows about it. When did they legalize this? I don't know. You want me to get my Google? I don't want to disrupt the podcast and get my Google out. But <laughs> listen, the people want to know. The people want you. I trust everything that I heard on TikTok. Uh, so yeah. it must have been probably recently. You know what? <laughs> Actually, I don't think. I think the tatas have always been legal in Denver, and they just. I don't know, man. Just try to keep it like hush hush, like the rest of the country. Um, the other night, Kelsey told me th- that the Cybertruck had been canceled. <laughs> Have you seen this? No, I've just been seeing more articles about it being released next year. Yeah, it's production was supposed to start twenty twenty three, but then an article came out that they have officially canceled it. <laughs> no, I, I literally like read an article today about them talking about putting old article year. old article you think so i guarantee it came out before the first all right which is when this article released you know sucks too is I, I it just... was a it was a tesla april fool's prank oh okay they released it on the first no need for you to worry it, okay i thought i was gonna worry you i thought you were gonna get scared and instead you started getting angry i i just <laughs> <In> defensive <laughs> what, what pissed me off is you brought up tesla cyber truck and i literally just bought the cyber truck hot wheel and I was going to bring it and, and just leave it up here, but I, I totally forgot now. That's why it was almost making me mad. But You think I want <clears throat> Elon merch sitting around our set? Disgusting. You still got your whistle laying around? I sold that shit. No way. Yeah, I sold the whistle. How much? Um, I paid 50 bucks for it. I, I When they were first coming out, they were selling for 100 I, th- yeah. I think it sold for like 70 bucks or something, 80 bucks. Um, I can't remember. You took it for a little less? Yeah. All right, whatever. Made money on it. Still flipped a whistle, which weirdest thing that I'll ever flip. Guaranteed. I bought like three of those Cybertruck Hot Wheels, and I figured I'm going to sell a couple of them and keep one or something. Yeah. We'll see. I do want the Cybertruck, man. I I like it more than the Rivian. I think... Uh, You're such a Tesla fanboy that you've even... True. You sent me a TikTok this week, like, Rivian underperforms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start it's like, all this like propaganda start gonna, <laughs> is gonna be all over your feet now, yeah. just of uh, anti uh, f and anything that's not uh, Tesla, right? Is trash. What that's do you think of it. him buying ten percent or like a controlling stake of Ooh, Twitter? Ooh, so Elon over here wants freedom of speech and he wants more control of How Twitter. How dare you call it freedom of speech? Elon wants more uh, rich people get to decide of what you say, <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna get in there and have his way, his his uh, say in what you say. I guess. Did you see the, the Twitter poll that he did before he bought some he, before he bought Twitter? No. He put out Twitter a poll before he bought Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he put out a poll in the. Should I buy this shit or what? <laughs> it, it, well, it said it said do you th- um. It was worded like. Freedom of speech is important for a democracy. Do you think Twitter adheres to this? 
And of course, everyone that follows Elon Musk, all these little meme lords are like, no, of course not. It was like 70, 30 on no. But I mean, the main point, it doesn't have to, right? And so it's a private. I don't have a, I don't have a Twitter, so I'm not, I don't know like what the kind of stuff they block or anything. I know I have a Facebook and I I know what they block. ISIS beheadings and COVID misinfo. Oh yeah. Which. And Russia stuff. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) (laughs) But I don't know. I've never seen anyone get blocked from Twitter, although I, I barely Trump use it. Trump did. That is true. So that's not freedom of speech. But, you know, I guess potentially he started riots in the Capitol, and, or uh, maybe, he, maybe, maybe, may not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we got to uh, retract right now. Like, if Twitter can, doesn't want somebody on their platform, they have the right to not let someone on their platform. Yeah. That's all it boils down to. Yeah. Politics aside, you can deny entry. Yeah. I don't know. What if Trump came in there and he bought some of it Twitter too? Like you, no, you'd kick me out. I'm Trump gonna... has his he created a Twitter alternative called That's Truth. Right. He made it. Have his you posted own your truth media. today? Yeah. Oh man. We get, should we make accounts on Dude, on we should truth? definitely make truth accounts. Maybe if it's funny enough when we do it, maybe that's our I video know, that comes out this week. I'm just if it's I, funny I, enough. I know. I want to get back on Omegle too. I miss I'm missing Omegle. We we haven't been on there. We in gotta a month. hit our goal. I know we've been we, that whole COVID month. It was just a, it was just a nothing. It was like right. no growth. It was just us <clears throat> doing surviving. <a> podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're surviving guys. It's okay. Uh, that's all right, man. We're going to, we're going to hit the, hit the trail hard this summer, man. I think I also want to film some skits, man. I was talking to my dad last night, who is a loyal viewer of the podcast, by the way. Oh, Thank you. Everyone. We appreciate that. Uh, he's like, I have my son in the living room with me. I'm like, okay, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he he's he wants to film a skit. I don't know if I mentioned this to you or not. Have I have I mentioned this to you? Um, no. He and we've we've joked about this because um, what the the old jujitsu gym I used to work at is right next to a cremation society or cremation it's it was called cremation society and now it's like um, what do they mean society i know that's the weird they changed the name but it used to be cremation society now it's something nicer like family home cremation services or something like much nicer sam sounding but what the fuck the, the name used to be really really weird but anyways <laughs> I one I, I my dad was in town with me and I like went to the gym he went came to the gym with me and I just dropped him off at front so he didn't have to like walk I was like here I'll drop you off and he's like what are you doing you dropped me off at the cremation place <laughs> like I'm not that old yet man I think you might have told me that story yeah, yeah. so it, it's we've we've been talking about this whole skit we could make from that like um you know just like hey pops i just wanted to like see what kind of rates we can get if there's any kind of like sales going on or anything and maybe you can you know walk in there and talk to him or something you know and plead your case or whatever i don't know you're i've seen a couple uh i've seen people going to like funeral homes but i don't think i've seen cremation places (laughs) and uh he's totally into it man he's got like he's got like paperwork he wants to bring of like these people trying to trying to sell funeral homes and stuff on him and stuff. He's like, you know, like to add to the video, like, uh, cremace, it's gotta be way cheaper. And it'd be funny oh. if he asked a question, like, what if I promise not to struggle while the flames are going? <laughs> Dude, they're like, what? <laughs> you know, you die first, right? We'll have a list of questions for him to like, here, see if you can get through these. All the questions imply that he's, n- he doesn't fully understand that he needs to be dead before getting cremated. Yes. And we could go to a couple of different cremation places just to see if we can get some footage. You know what I mean? Like, this is kind of like, I don't know, jackassy kind of, but uh, I didn't know if we want to go with like turn into a skit or turn into like a I would live, feel, you know, a jackassy kind of thing. Well, what I would they feel call most those? comfortable with telling the people like calling ahead of time and being like, hey, we want to f- film. It could be so it, promotional. Yeah, yeah, okay. I see what you mean. So. It's and either like us filming a skit or it's us secret filming and blurring faces out and shit. Which I don't like. You don't like I that? I don't like that. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I want to do that. <laughs> you can definitely do that. That can exist over 
<laughs> elsewhere. Oh. I, <laughs> I'm afraid of that idea. <laughs> Oh man, that's all right. I sent you one today that was, or yesterday that was like, I'm literally leaving a truck open with merchandise in it, and then somebody runs in and tries to grab it, and then they locked the guy in the truck. Now and that then one I liked. Put the curtain up, and then they drove the guy around, and then they announced, "Look at the thief, everybody!" <laughs> yeah, so that was fucking dude. The the Can walls of the truck were tear away. So yeah. as soon as the guy walked into the truck to they steal it, him. they shut him in there. And he's like took the, the side panels off, just yeah. trying to get trying out. Trying to get out, not a chance. <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, you'd have to get a truck and build this whole thing out. But also, the thing is, is that that's. I mean, if we did it, that's a kidnapping charge. It doesn't <sighs> matter that he was trying to steal from us. We literally kidnapped this person. Dang. <laughs> How did they get? How did they get around that, man? Oh, uh, different country. Different country. It was a different country. It was a different country. All right. Well, we'll just have to go on a vacation. Maybe. What countries allow the kidnapping? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to name any, but I got a few chambers. I got a list, <laughs> got a list, of, I got the a list <laughs> of the nearest. <laughs> I feel like if I named any, people would take it the wrong way. <laughs> they're they're listed nearest to furthest. <laughs> yeah, by distance, of course. <laughs> uh, speaking of video editing, I edited this video. I showed you it earlier of this uh, competition I entered. Oh, yeah. What's all that about? Um, I so, saw the figure on your desk, too. Yeah, I had to print a bunch of figures for this. So... <laughs> We haven't even, have we even talked about your dang printer, Resin printer at all? Briefly during the COVID times. Yeah. Did we? Okay. I don't remember that at all, man. You might have, man, I don't. So let's start with that then. I, yeah. I got a resin printer um, and a wash and cure machine. Yeah. And it was all less than 400 bucks. Super interesting, man. I'm, I'm, I want to get some sort of 3D printer as well. You went a different route with the resin printer. Yeah. Which is interesting. I chose, a lot of people don't, probably don't know the difference between those. Right. And I explained it a couple podcasts ago how this one works. But this one is able to get like really fine detail. Yeah. Okay. And you're able to make miniatures. We did talk about this a little bit now. Um, those miniatures uh, you can sell through. A, What's the biggest you can make? Like four as inches? As big as the build plate. So it would be like... <clears throat> Maybe five inches wide yeah. and then maybe six inches tall. So it, just like a little square. Yeah. yeah. If you, Which is fairly big for like if you want to make But you've just been bigger. making little two or three inch little things? Yeah. So there's a company or there's a lot of miniature service that make 3D models and they have Patreons. And you can mm. sub to their Patreon for like uh, 10 bucks a month. And you have access to print all of those files. Wow. And they come out with new files every month. But you can't sell those files because those are owned by those are owned by the artist, the, the company. But they a lot of them have a what they call a merchant tier, which is like thirty bucks a month, and you can sell anything you print. Nice. So long as you you're on their merchant tier. Nice. And I was thinking like I was about to say, there's got to be some open source stuff out there. Like, how do you get to that? But there is open source stuff. It's just stuff. not good shit. You it's want, well, you it, want good artists. It's also not ethical to sell it because someone made it. Somebody did make it. Yeah. Huh. Unless you're making your own 3D models, <clears throat> then the, this like merchant tier is the way to go. And I wonder if there's going to be an NFT market for 3D printed designs. Um, so you can only have, this is the only person that has that design or something. That's kind of interesting. Because it is art. That's super interesting. I don't know if you would need to, need to, but it is kind of. We'll get back to NFTs later, yeah. folks. But uh, anyway, sorry. Off track, getting back to resin printer. Yeah. the Rosin? Resin? Resin. Resin. Resin, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got it because I was like, this is a low startup cost. And if I sell these miniatures on eBay, it could pay for itself in a few months, you know? And you, then it's, you paid and then 400 it's, bucks and you've already made a bunch of shit. Have you had to refill your, um, re resin? I've gone, this is my third bottle of resin and I've printed a shit ton of things and each bottle costs 30 bucks. Wow. Sick. But <clears throat> it's kind of, yeah, it is kind of neat because I, I, I watch and I've seen people 
who started with a 3D printer and they started selling things and now they have a 3D printing farm is what they call it, mm-hmm. where it's just a room of things printing them money. Just constantly, man. And dude, I'm super interested in it too because you just have to, I mean, you could design your own shit, but <clears throat> you're doing it a, a great way by going through artists and all that. But I was watching a TikTok where a guy, he's printing out planters. Planters, planters would be planters. easy to make in Blender. Dude, and you just, they make a nice little design and it's, it's, a, it's a weird one-off planter. It's not this normal little cup and, or a normal little vase. They have a little etching or something weird that you design. I mean, dude. How easy is that? You could just have one freaking 3D printer constantly making these planters, and that's a basically it could be to order, or or you know hopefully you're selling a lot of them. But yeah, most of the people do to order, right? And um, you could keep a few on hand, and you know whatever. What I wanted to do was I like, and, and I might make this whole thing a video, like where I deep dive into this this concept. I've dude, I've totally been wanting. I mean, it's even in my notes here of as the salty soup channel buying a 3d printer and exploring that, I, you know, I, you haven't f- really filmed anything about this resin thing yet. I, I mean, that would have been good for even your salt, your, your dankest soup channel, even though, you well, know. there is a video coming out on the dankest soup channel oh. that I want to talk about. Oh, okay. But That's first what, I want to say like, yeah. um, I, I bought three miniatures from three different eBay sellers mm. to check how they're shipping these things because yeah. I want to and check what kind of quality they're sending to people. Yeah. And Product this was research. like a week or two ago. And I just got the second one back yesterday. I'm still waiting on a third. So Could, slow shippers. And if you look in there, descri- Which it should be first class shipping like really fast. It's super light. Yeah. The thing is, is that the one I'm still waiting on his item description is like very combative. And it's just like, look, these things take a lot of time to print. I don't have on hand inventory during the holiday seasons. It gets even busier. It's just like nothing but excuses. And I'm like, perfect. I would love to order from you because you sound like a dick. Oh, that's so interesting. Man. And the other two I've gotten back have had uh, printing defects. Like the one I just got back yesterday, it's like of an alien like from the movie alien. Yeah. And it's missing a finger and like, there's still support Dang. stuck to it. It's, it's going to be, I, I just think it'd be interesting to kind of make that into like a, and you know, these are resin printers and not 3d they, printers. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Um, but the other thing is, is that there's a, now you know, like now you guys know that I have this resin printer and like kind of what my plans are with it. But and I only got it three weeks ago. But there is a YouTuber who I follow. You, you haven't even you haven't tried to sell anything on it yet, have you? No. no. Now that I got my second thing back and both things were shipped the exact same way, I'm confident in the shipping process. So this week and I plan to list things that I've already printed. And the cool thing about that is. Nobody's listing things that are already printed. Everyone's doing this print to order. So like I have a bunch of, I've just been printing the past three or four weeks. Right. So I've got stuff. You got a little inventory. In now. the title I can put in bold letters, ready to ship. You know what yeah. I mean? And we live in Denver too. And I've had a lot of success with my shipping in America because it seems like we're right in the middle and it just boom, it gets to whatever coast you're on within one or two days. For sure. I think it's kind of an advantage of a little bit being in the mid- the middle of America right here as a eBay or there's this YouTuber who I watch and this will tie into the resin printing and also into trading cards, which is what my main channel is all about. Right. But he does this series. <clears throat> it's called nerd city. He does this series called the try hard series, which is where he takes like a trending internet thing and he dives deep into it. He makes like a three parts uh, v- series about how it works and like what the best way to do it and things like that. In fact, he did a series about YouTuber merch, which kind of led into what it means to um, patron an artist and get something Mm -hmm. done on commission, Yeah, which is what our logo is. Our logo is 
an artist made this for us. And um, because of that YouTube series, I knew how to approach an artist Actually, and like what to expect. One, yeah, this one I made. There's another one above you can't see, but my bad. Anyways. Um, and I and I've I've used like <coughs> services like Fiverr a few times and that's the one you use, huh? Fiverr. Yeah. And uh because of that series, like it walks you through all the steps and like how you should be approaching it and what to expect. I I never even thought about that. We could have made a video about you going through Fiverr and or and going through an artist. We could even still do that and make some more logo i don't know make some more things and something stuff. yeah, yeah. I, there'll always be merch opportunities right we want to make a t-shirt idea or something we'll have them make it and make a video out of it i so like that his current um try hard series that he's working on right now it goes over an internet craze that is trading cards and nfts and obviously you're like how do those relate right well, they could. They could. But yeah. and here's how he wants them to relate. Trading cards, um, when you buy a loose card on eBay, what's the biggest fear? The biggest fear is that it's not authentic, right? It's a forgery mm. that someone created. Right. So what he's doing is, for free, he's creating trading cards that have to do specifically with his channel. So it'll be characters from his channel. Sure. And they're free to get... He'll send you a trading card for free so long as you like are part of his community. You participate in his Discord or mm -hmm. you happen to watch a video with him or something like that. And what he's doing to prove that the card he sends you is authentic is he's also airdropping a duplicate of that card into your, wa into your NFT wallet or your crypto wallet. Okay. Um, he is handwriting the wallet address he sent the card to. And also like his name and things like that. So you can link both of those up to some degree of certainty that they're authentic. That way, if someone goes to sell this, they have like a proof of authenticity right. that tr theoretically would travel with the card. And you have control over everything. Right. Hmm. So for fun, he, oh, about a week or two ago, he teased that he wanted to do like a fan art thing where people create cards for this project. Oh. And I had just gotten the 3D printer, so I'm, I'm loving 3D printing. And because I just got it, I, I'm not great with the 3D modeling service. Mm -hmm. So again, I hired an artist using knowledge that I got from a YouTube video that he put out, which is really funny. Yeah. And... Uh, I had him make these uh, s these skulls that wear hats. Nice. Which is another NFT project that Nerd City is a part of. Oh, okay. Um, it's called DAPS, Dead Avatar Project. Okay. And his... I was about to say, it seems like a lot of these have like s skeletons and skulls well, these and are apes all s and yeah. animals and whatever. His, and his have skulls and... His specifically, the one that he owns, is modeled after himself. So it has like a hat and it has his glasses on it. Gotcha. Um, so when the art competition was teased, I, was our, I had already commissioned someone from Fiverr to make this for me. I'm printing skulls for like three straight days till I have nearly 20 of them. Yeah. And then I film, uh, I film a bunch and then I, I edit it all together and I, I put it underneath this card border, which I'll play now. So yeah, that was my submission. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> we have to act like we just watched it. <laughs> I was looking for it. I don't know where I was. Uh, but yeah, it was as soon as he was able to like actually release the competition, then I already had mine done because I was paying nice. attention and then I listened to him tease it. Yeah. So like I finished the day before the competition was announced. Wow. So as soon as the competition was announced, I was able to post my entry like boom, boom. immediately. And the prizes are nuts. Like 
uh, the first place prize is like $500 in ETH, um, an NFT of the dead avatars, and then your card would be one of the cards in mm. the set. Sick. Hopefully you get it, man. I hope so. First place is insane, but second and third and fourth place, they all have like Ethereum prizes and NFT prizes. And I mean, it looks legit. It looks like, I mean, you could definitely compete. Yeah. I mean, pff, I shit. hope so. That's awesome, man. I think that uh, that's that's pretty cool that you can just do whatever you want with these. We got this equipment here. We got, I mean, where do we go from this? You know, I don't know. That's pretty cool. But I do, I do want to do um, a <clears throat> because it's about trading cards. I was like, oh, this is a perfect place for my main channel. Like, I could film the process of making this trading card and submitting it. And that could live on my main channel. That's about trading cards. Oh, uh, okay. Not too far of a jump. Yeah. Did you hear Logan Paul spent like $5 million or something on a Pokemon on card? On a PSA 10 Illustrator card. Yeah. Oh, my God. Cody's creaming over here. That That is the holy grail. Yeah, the, the rarest Everyone, card. Everyone knows about the Shadowless Charizard. Right. Uh, n unless you're like digging deep not a lot of people know about the illustrator card, which was a prize card given away during an illustration contest. Right. And speaking uh, of illustration contest. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Point. It was during a card art contest. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> a lot got sent out. A few got graded. The only, I have never seen a PSA 10. I've seen a PSA nine before listed. Wow. I've never seen a 10, a perfect 10. Yeah. There's probably only my, it's a very small handful. I would love to uh, actually. I can, I can look up the population count in my PSA profile. Yeah, I bet there's only one. Probably, man. I'll list it right here. How many exist in the world? But and somebody sold. It's been sold a few times now. It's not like the original illustrators had had this for yeah ten years, twenty years now. He's been been just waiting to sell it for five million dollars, right? <laughs> Poor guy probably got rid of it for a hundred bucks just to fucking feed his family. <laughs> now it's now he's seeing Logan Paul wearing it on his necklace. Five million dollars, bitch. You know, crazy amount um, of money. I think it was five million. You can, I, I don't know. It was. It was I think it was five point five mil, which is uh, the record for the highest individual Pokemon card sale. Wow, but Leon, Leon Hart's just like that motherfucker. I'm gonna, I yeah. He, uh, does that'd be great if Leon Hart hated Logan Paul, dude? And he's like that fucker stealing my limelight, man. I started opening up Pokemon cards, and then Logan. Leon Hart put out a video recently about how exactly what I've been saying, dude. How his heart hasn't been in it for I a know, long time. I did actually. Uh, how he's been a he. He did put up a weird, depressing video, and, and this is kind of weird too because he did just do this whole pop up shop where you feel like that would have revitalized him. He. He this for people who don't know, Leon Hart is a card Pokemon card opener, and he is the nicest of all of them on out there, and probably one of the most popular too. Very like, wholesome, very um, family friendly, right? <laughs> but we've been talking about this guy for so long because we he got us kind of into opening cards on for for on YouTube, and he's kind of opened up the most expensive packs already so you know he's we you know he, are you doing this for like an adrenaline rush like what whatever his purpose is like you got to find a new purpose or something man because the, <laughs> the thing is yeah you you've done the most extreme openings you've opened the most expensive products and now that doesn't give you much room for like he's always trying to right. one-up himself right so your, your channel is not going to keep growing right he did this, so his his last idea was, I got, apparently he's got all this storage unit full of stuff that he's holding, and he's going to go start up a fake 90s shop where you go in and buy a booster pack for $5 that's 20 years old that, you know, at the retail value it was 20 years ago. Right. Uh, I don't, I haven't really heard of anybody else doing something like this, by the way. Did he copy this? Like I've, I haven't really heard of something like this. I've never heard or seen anything like it, but you got to buy, you got to, you had, you had to buy a ticket. We tried to, we couldn't, you know, we want to do a whole thing. It was tough, 
But if you got the ticket, you got to buy one thing. And the other weird thing is you had to open the thing in front of the cameras. I mean, I'm assuming so he could use it. And Well, it was because... <clears throat> He he had really um, done a I think a good job at bulletproofing the thing from being <clears throat> sniped by scalpers and flippers and bots. Right. So to get in to this ticket, you it was only one per like address, and that gave you entry for you and a friend I think. Hmm. And if your name wasn't the purchaser on the ticket, then you weren't getting in. Yeah. So you if you bought the ticket, you needed to go. Mm -hmm. and you could only buy one ticket and gotcha. then the other thing was you had to open it there so you didn't buy the pack and try to resell and then it, sell it immediately 500 yeah yeah i get it i mean that makes sense uh but anyways regardless uh you know that was kind of his big project this past year and then at, right after that he put out some like i don't know if it was a video or just a a paragraph on youtube it was a video i watched okay. it okay cuz like sometimes i'll get like a par i got like a paragraph it was like sorry i didn't upload anything this week you know it sounded like depressing like uh you know i can't remember what he was saying but what was the video like was he just talking about <laughs> it was dude it was like exactly what i was saying all along uh, the reason I quit posting openings of Pokemon cards on my main channel was because I did watch Leon Hart and I could see in his eyes mm. how sad he was. I mean, and, well, when we're starting it, we're thinking like, oh man, this, this could pay for our Pokemon obsession too. But at a certain point, I'm sure if we had enough money and you can just buy so many cards, it probably does get boring, man, I, I suppose. Also, right? I mean, this is something know. that you love, right? And when yeah. you turn it into the job yeah, uh, and you're expected to release four videos a week like he does, then that it's was just something, a chore. That was something, too, is you were, when you started your YouTube channel, you were like, you're all about the schedules for some reason. This guy has a schedule. I got to be here at noon. It's important. <laughs> We got to get this this podcast out on Schedules Sunday. Schedules are important. I mean, why do you think ninety nine percent of jobs in America have a start time? I have something called Dalton time. All right, you'll right. you'll learn it's, about Dalton time if you if I, you ever if you're a friend of mine. I'll tell you whatever time I'm going to be there, and then I'll say Dalton time. Yeah, they all know. They all know add that an, this podcast is scheduled at for twelve. <laughs> And you've never been here before one. <laughs> they all know this. And I try to get here by noon too. That's the thing. Like <laughs> you I, don't. I aim for noon, but then like I'm like, oh, and that ain't happening. Anyways, his videos would just mainly we're said like what we're talking about that, right? He, <clears throat> he feels like he's constantly having to do this thing, and the views are dying because the Pokemon craze is dying. Hmm. And yeah. it and it's only adding to him being depressed about this thing. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have something else, I guess, man. If you're, he he really backed himself into this corner of I'm just a Pokemon card opener. That's what scared me. I was like, could I open these for the rest of my life? You did open up other things besides Pokemon, though. It was yeah, he has to. A bit a more bit. diversified. Really? I haven't really watched. He's done a little bit of, I mean, not a lot, like a handful of videos where he's opened up like Yu-Gi-Oh! Probably doesn't vintage excite him the same as Pokemon, though. Yeah, and I learned that, right? Because I, I opened up Dragon Ball Z cards, and I was like, this one's kind of neat. Ooh, shiny. Like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <clears throat> but yeah, I think it would be cool to put up a video where I do like the making of how I made that card and then also a video on. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you want to try to make money on a resin printer Fuck, and like, yeah. here are three things that I bought from other people. This is why they suck. Like, here's how you could do it better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a million videos that you could make with that and they could easily be successful. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't, yeah, I think you should just, uh, and I think maybe I should, maybe I should get a regular 3D printer to compete with you and we could have competing videos, like what's better, this or that. I would love for you to get a regular 3D printer. I'm so down. Because there are some bigger if files you, that I want to print. show me like what you, were th what you recommend on a 3D printer, I'm, I'm easily done. I just bought a, I just upgraded my graphics card, so it's going to have to wait a week or two. <laughs> okay. I, What'd you get? 
I got a 30 series. I, I, I'm running a 10 series right now, and um, my buddy's got a, a – 30 sp- series is a big improvement. I know, man. It's going to – I'm going to have to get a new monitor eventually too, but I'm excited. I Have you already mention, installed it? No, it's it's being shipped. But Oh, okay. The graphics card I have right now is like – a hammy down that four of my friends have already used. Like who knows if that thing's going to last another week or two. I spilled juice on it once. It's like, I can't believe it's alive right now. I got to tell you with the leg shaking and you spilling juice on things, you are, you are a toddler. You're actually a toddler. I have restless leg syndrome. It's a, it's a syndrome. Oh, are you saying I can't make fun of your medical condition? You keep my name out of your fucking mouth okay that's all i want to say i oh i i I want to talk about that for a second Oh yeah i do too so first of all people love that opening i know it's fucking great um secondly i still haven't seen anybody on tiktok or anybody else edit something similar to that you know well cut it up like that i i got so excited after we had shot the podcast that our I, we had talked about it and we're like, oh, we got to release this edit as a YouTube short. Which we have never released any shorts on our channel yet. Right. And I thought, good. I th- this is a good idea. And then I, I, right before like editing it down to just a short, I, th- I th- even said to you, I said, like this thing says fuck immediately. This is going to get red flagged and nobody will see it at all. Right. So... So then I edited a little bit of context, me telling you that I had the original clip just to give us a few seconds cushion before a hard F-bomb. Right. And I post that right before I go to bed. And I wake up to a text from you. This thing's got 1,700 views. It got 1,700 views overnight. Overnight. And that's where it died. The next day, nothing. Because it, it's got... Uh, <laughs> reported i assume or something like that there's no way it grows 1700 views overnight and then a week later it has not increased a single view other than the 10 from me and dalton (laughs) we're not experienced youtube short people and i know like definitely on tiktok your stuff's a lot more uh the algorithm puts it out there a lot more when it just gets released but i mean literally overnight almost 2000 views and then nothing dead so and we just don't know it why it's not like it's not like they're gonna they say there's no report saying hey your shit got reported it's just uh i don't I, know man i'm even more conscious now about us swearing and stuff i know when we started this channel we were so excited about making like an adult channel. yeah being it, it being very adult because our our original channels were so family friendly. So we well we 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 made them and then they put out this whole like you got to say if your channel is a kid kid channel friendly yeah. or if it's adult you know and then we're like oh man I guess we got to start swearing to make sure our shit's adult because we don't want to be a kid channel you know right but now I'm looking at like we're watching these videos and and the YouTube CEOs and talking about like you get you're going to get demonet not demonetized but less money if you're swearing and doing drugs or drinking and stuff uh because advertisers don't want their ads playing when you're just you know uh, doing drugs and drinking and swearing and stuff so yeah. there's going to be less products uh available to be advertised on your sh- channel it is and they're talking you know how do you get around that right there is a sweet spot um if if the goal is to make as much money as possible from views on YouTube, but I think a lot of people who do choose to swear, uh, most of their money comes from brand deals and affiliate and promoted. Mm-hmm. And- yeah, that's the thing is you're probably gonna have to. You can still use YouTube as a source of you know creating an audience, but they might not be your. The, the bread, you know? Yeah. Huh. Speaking of the YouTube bread CEO, winner. since you brought her up, yep. and I almost forgot, uh, something we've talked about I a long time is how does Web3 integrate to YouTube? Right. And she did a podcast with Ludwig where she talked about within two years, NFTs will become an integral part of YouTube. Mm-hmm. And something I thought was interesting was she thought of it 
she thought that it would help small creators. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I can really see it being beneficial <clears throat> for the bigger ones, but she seemed to think, no, this benefits smaller creators. Well, it's so weird because she's trying to reflect on people in like the music industry right now who are trying to get their songs out there and have no record label or, or means of distribution and how NFTs could be a means to popularize their music and make money right away. Now we're trying to add the same thing to videos. Can we get you money faster than how YouTube's doing it currently? Um, but she also took a, you know, a different take on it too, about how it's also about controlling your stuff and you don't want people taking your videos and making NFTs out of your videos and making money off of them. So you want to rate, you want to be able to own your stuff and they want to, that was one of the things that they, you know, she's saying is YouTube's so good at being able to know who is the original owners of this content and who should be, you know, here's what I think. I think YouTube is good at sticking its nose where it doesn't need to be mm. the, um, in the card that I just showed you, the card that I made, those skulls are based off an NFT created by a YouTuber. And the function of that NFT is to give is Patreon function. It gives you access to channels in his Discord that people without it don't have access to. In those channels, he speaks to you directly. You can communicate with him and he lets you know on projects he's working on. Mm -hmm. Instead of paying 10 bucks a month for Patreon and getting that out of it, you can do a one-time purchase for this NFT. It unlocks that door for you, and you can sell the key whenever you want to to mm. the next person who wants it. So for YouTube, I think that's a great tool. I think that would be a great function. Um, another cool function for YouTube would be Pope tokens. So Pope is P-O-A-P. -P. It stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. And this says, like... Here's a token that's airdropped to you. You got it for free. And it, it says you were subbed to PewDiePie before 100 million. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You were subbed to them before they hit 1 million. Like these are tokens that you can like kind of use to flex. They didn't cost you anything, but they show that you were a part of this community before everyone else got in. Um, those are two things that I think would be really cool to see YouTube implement, but I do fear what you're saying, which is they're going to start creating NFTs where they get a cut of the profit, right? Cause that's what they are. They're this big evil corporation and sure. It makes it easier for the average Joe YouTuber to create an NFT project, right? but they also see less of a percentage because of it. I mean, people are YouTubers are already doing their own NFT projects. Exactly. YouTube's, you know, like you're saying, they could, you could be rephrasing it as we just want a cut of that. But what they're going to say is we're trying to protect you. You don't, don't go with weirdos yeah. over there. They're your, we no, want to help no, no, the no. little guy. We're going to help you out. Yeah. And, and we're just, yeah, this is just for the little guy. And actually, I really liked Ludwig's, um, pushback where he was talking about his his um take on it and saying you know yeah, it sounds like a lot of people are going to advertise this like it's for the small creators to start making money but at the end of the day all these big creators are just going to use it to create their own bullshit and then it's not going to be worth anything ex except for the creator who's going to hold on to whatever um, you know, whatever he, whatever value was left in, and he's going to be able to keep all the money of, that whoever bought their shit from him too, you know? Right. Like ding doink or whatever <laughs> ding else a Paul brother made. Um, stick dicks was another one. Why haven't those people, why haven't those, the Paul sisters been canceled yet? Why haven't they been prosecuted oh, is what I want to know. Cancel culture. Why haven't you gotten on them yet? Um, I, they I, almost, I, they almost did. Didn't Logan or one of them, uh, do a video in front of somebody that was like committing suicide or something. And Logan Paul went to Japan. He yeah. went to the suicide forest and he stumbled upon somebody who had hung themselves and he posted that on YouTube. But 
Apparently that's too far. <laughs> He's still around making millions. I, like, I guess you can do it. You know what it. pissed me off? Like, why does Logan Paul get this stand by me moment? You know what I mean? Why does he get to discover a dead body <laughs> and waste it by showing the world? <laughs> yeah. If it was just me and you walking down some railroad tracks and we saw one, that'd be a magic moment that we kept secret until we wrote a book about it we'd 30 f- years later. No, we'd finally go viral. <laughs> Anyways, I think that, no, you're right. The The image itself isn't what has value. It's what the creator attached to it chooses to do and the community he chooses to make with it. Yeah. That's where the value comes from. And, uh, no, Stick Dicks and Ding Toink never, <laughs> never had any intention to provide value like that. It was just a cash grab so that Logan could buy the... Th- $5.5 million illustrator card, PSA 10. I think um, so far, I'm, I'm not so much into the, maybe it is good for music artists. Maybe it's good for, you know, whatever kind of regular artists or graphic artists, but I'm still interested in just NFTs for video games. I know there's games now where people are making money, which... Uh, yeah, maybe you can fill me on, on what's going on there, but I'm more interested in uh, being able to get something in a game and sell it to somebody else. Right. Uh, the, one of the biggest games out right now, El- Elder Scro- Scrolls, Elden Scrolls. Are you in, you into this now or no? I Elden Ring. I've watched a bunch of friends because I have streaming <sighs> friends. They were all playing Elden Ring. Everybody's but. playing that right now. And I guess one of the big deals in that game is it was a very well-made game. You pay 60 bucks and it's all there. You don't have to worry about buying extra levels, buying extensions, buying skins. They just decided we're just going to put it all out. We're not going to do microtransactions on this one, which I thought was interesting because it sounds like that's been the new... Video games are like that nowadays. It's it's like we're just going to make this like video game that has hardly anything in it, so you want more, and we're going to have to buy the levels, you have to buy the skins, you have to buy the extensions. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people hate microtransactions, but I always feel like if it's purely cosmetic, if you want to look like the Grinch, you know, shooting your gun, then that's y- your choice. But the fact that you're paying them and then you get this phys- you get this cosmetic item that only your account can have now it'd be so nice if that's interesting you you could buy the cosmetic item when you're done looking like the grinch cuz now you want to look like a gremlin or some shit yeah i can sell it to you who does want to look like the grinch you know what i mean and they can and listen the the game developer can set up um royalties on it so every transaction they get 10% of and they can use that money to line their pockets for all I care, or they can use that money to develop the next expansion or the next game or whatever the case may be. So you've set up this system where game companies are not only reliant on initial sales to, to pay their employees and to develop the next thing. They, mm-hmm. they're, they have a video game that as long as people are playing it and transacting these NFTs, they're continuously, um, getting paid right do one of my favorite video games growing up was unreal tournament oh same dude. and it was we've never talked about that i know it was one of my it was crazy because i had a, a friend of my block who we both skateboarded so we had that thing that connection and uh his dad or, uh, had three computers set up in the back room so all three of us could hop on and play Unreal Tournament together. And uh, Unreal Tournament was great because it was not only like a... First-person shooter. First-person A really good first-person shooter. Yeah. But... Cool-ass guns. You know, out in space. Yeah, it was, I think it was one of the first gu- games that was like double kill, triple kill, That's wh- headshot. Shot. Yeah. Yeah, one of the first... I think they're the first to kind of do that. But uh, what else was cool is, uh, you know, I, I don't know... How, who did this or how but people i guess they hacked the game but you could download skins yeah and it was people made these skins it wasn't like the game put these skins out there for you to get or they didn't sell them but people made skins and they were 
characters from anime and stuff that you knew. Like my my the, my favorite one that I downloaded was Bender from Futurama. So I'm running around as Bender shooting people. And now they downloaded the audio clips from the show too. So every time I'm killing people, <laughs> he's got his little audio clip from the show. Right. Uh, how I mean, some of the coolest, most the funnest times I've ever had. And I've I have never to this day had something like that, which I suppose now it would be like Fortnite because I see people now like they can download Spider Man and shit yeah. like that on Fortnite. Exactly. Um, Minecraft, Fortnite. I mean, you could do it for Apex. You certainly do it for Call of Duty. Well, Call of Duty has I mean, constant. Apex, you only have twenty characters, and but they have different costumes, right? True, you get different skins. I just meant like that kind of transcended also into mainstream media, and and you know. Obviously, they were doing it illegally. Like nobody, yeah. Futurama didn't allow them right. to do that, uh, which is interesting. I, you know, I don't know how the logistics are of um, Fortnite be, being able to use Spider Man and and stuff like that. You know, they must have had to pay for that likeness. You know, <laughs> it's a cross promotion. Yeah, definitely. It's just uh, Spider Man was coming out. You know what I mean? They're trying to promote Spider Man the movie. And Fortnite wants that skin, so yeah. How far away are we from this, like, Ready Player One, though, you know? I feel like I played the beta version, you know what I mean, when I was a kid, and then it's just we're slowly getting more and more integrated, more and more closer to this virtual thing, man. Good, because the real world sucks. <laughs> Is Who's going to own it, Google or Elon Musk? I don't know. Oh God! I would hate it if it was if it was Elon Musk. It would just be like sixty nine four twenty jokes it's, everywhere. It's and, gonna have to be Elon because he's the only one that can make the get the whole world in on the game. You know, what I mean, he's like I. Wherever you're at in the world, this is. I just want to. I just want Elon to not be fourteen years old. Sometimes, you know what I mean. He, dude, he's gonna use social media <laughs> and completely fuck with people as much. I mean, did you hear that? The Tesla Gigafactory in Texas last week, uh, I think it might have had its official grand opening, and they had a party, a carnival, what whatnot. And Elon, uh, well, first of all, the the city told them they they weren't supposed to have one that big. Like he, they tried getting permits and shit. I'm like, no, you can't have something that big. And then they just went and did it anyways. And he got all kinds of tickets and fines, and they tried like arresting him and shit. And I think he just paid his way out of it, but. Uh, uh yeah the whole why you tell me that now i hate him more <laughs> he's uh, a, imagine a lawbreaker well because a law he, you trying to have, throw carnivals elon you you evil for your whole company your gigafactory for, he's a menace he's, he's he's wealthy enough that the laws he breaks doesn't matter because he can pay the ticket i mean if you could you would throw a giant party too don't act like you would. You know what my party would be? It would be me in a dark room, just remember away this, from people. Remember our our old party days? No. <laughs> <laughs> that that might be a good cliffhanger for the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about some of that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if we want to bring up those memories. Do they want that? Space, Do they want to name the bird? SpaceX is doing their own token pre-sale right now like some sort of crypto token which is interesting because spacex isn't on the stock market yet and is it going to be combined with tesla are you just going to buy this token and that's going to be like their version of stock I um i it, they can't be like that or if it is the sec needs to step in oh, and like start treating these yeah. things as securities because that's true. That's what that's what some people fear with like creator tokens is that they they become stock in yeah. a creator, you know what I mean? At which point kind of is, man. You need to yeah, report them on your taxes and things like that and I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's still the wild wild west with crypto. It's not not highly regulated yet. There's goods and bads to it. How much regulation do we want? Something that's supposed to be decentralized and unregulated. <laughs> De enough so that There's, Dink Doink doesn't rob an entire fan base. Right, right. Like we should, we can't have pyramid schemes because a lot of people fall for pyramids. Yeah. 
Bitconnect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, rules need to be put in place. And the sooner the better. That way the market can adjust to them. And a, a lot of these bad actors can get thrown away. In fact, there was um, two people have finally been prosecuted for a rug pull I NFT. Heard about that. Yeah, they they created a roadmap. They minted out their NFTs. They took that money and did not follow through with the roadmap. So they were. And then they try to make another one. Try to make another NFT project. Or this was their second one. or And then they were trying to make a third, I think. Yeah. But the it, point is, is that people are starting to get in trouble for it, which is why I think and I hope that these creators start. People start going after them, too. They got arrested, fined for over a million. I'm pretty sure. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I started a BitConnect account. I never invested in it. <laughs> that would have been so funny if you did. Your life savings. <laughs> Put it all in. Dude. Dude, a thousand percent uh, back, man. That guy's name is Carlos. Yeah. And Carlos got roped into another scheme oh, recently. Oh, no, Carlos. He had this redemption arc, and then some... Uh, crypto bros got a hold of him and, con <laughs> and convinced him to promote this other scheme. We you, Carlos. And the scheme was Who that... Who would ever follow Carlos again, man? What project? <sighs> Car Here's Carlos again. I, I got some more money. I invested it again. <laughs> yeah, so he's kind of a like a lovable oaf. He's, I, I watched him on a couple podcasts <laughs> yeah. and he's like actually... He's genuine. He's like he genuine sounds like he's he was not super intelligent. And he went on this podcast again after his redemption arc to with these two crypto bros who are like the brains behind this new scam. And the host of the podcast lit him up. Like this is stupid. He, they actually the whole thing was it was selling gifts of the BitConnect moment of that whole stage on BitConnect. Yeah. And the host was like, okay, yeah, but none of you guys filmed this. You guys don't actually own any of this no. video footage. You guys can't sell this. No, unless and, you had a cameraman and out there. They thought they were going on there to promote this thing Oof. to get a bunch of sales. Oof. And by the end of it, they were devastated. They were pissed off. And uh, the obviously the host of the podcast was like laughing at how stupid this was. And their thing just failed. Wow. Just failed, which is good because we don't need another bad actor. Yeah, man. I mean, whoever filmed that, it should have total rights to the video. Right. Well, I don't know, man. Web 3.0, it's coming. Maybe next week we'll talk about parties. Didn't we already talk about parties? I don't think so. I mean, we've talked about no. topics related to parties, but never specifically. I got to go through. Well, next week actually is our 420 podcast. So perfect time I to talk about parties. I don't know. I don't know if we should. <laughs> next week is going to be very difficult might for me because little, I'm going to feel. We might be a little forgetful. It's going to be a little slower. <laughs> yeah. Next so. week is the 420 <laughs> podcast. I don't smoke weed. Me neither. But I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I will be super paranoid and I will not be talking. This will be a Dalton show. You hear that? <laughs> oh, man. Is somebody outside? <laughs> I think it's the cops, man. <laughs> they, hear, they heard Don't us. Don't tell me that. They heard us talking about Russia and shit, man. I think it's Putin. Putin's outside. <laughs> oh, God. Just the, the, the paranoia just gets worse and worse. It's already building. I'm it's breathing the a army. little faster. <laughs> My heart is beating now. <laughs> Meteors coming down. You've actually seen a meteor. I can't believe you. You should be. You, you're probably. Are you afraid of meteors now? Like you've actually seen one. Like you think you're going to get hit by one or something? Actually. Now I feel like I am. That is the almost <clears throat> my dream to go out by meteor. Because so, it seems so instant. I was watching. Do, do you know what? I don't really like heights. All right. Not a fan. Whenever we go hiking or something, I'm more like, I'm not really the guy that likes to go like right to the edge. I'm like a guy that's like at least five or 10 feet away from the edge. Like, oh, I can see it. It looks good. Okay. And I'll, Tess and I are watching our ma some master classes and uh, we we're watching this like survival expert and she's trying to explain how like when you see a snake you can't tense up and freak out you have to like train yourself to like 
uh, when you see a snake to just, oh, it's just a snake, calm down and back up. And then she started bringing up, like, imagine if you're on the side of a cliff and there's a snake that pops out and then boom, you just jump off because you freak out. And now all I can think about is, oh, great. Now the second I'm at the side of a cliff, all I'm going to be worrying about is snakes everywhere jumping out at me. What kind of a survival expert are you? You're not helping me, lady. She's not a good survival expert. You just made my or anxiety. Or you described her in a so really much, weird way. <laughs> so much worse. I didn't, yeah, I couldn't even uh, even pay attention to what her points were because now I'm thinking there's snakes at the edge of every cliff that I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to die. And I, was, that's, I, wasn't, I was too tense when the snake came. <laughs> and Buffoon. then, boom, jump off. <laughs> I'm so tense, worried about snakes. All right, man, let's cut the feed.